Okay, so let's do another example. So NOAA states that the average dive of a sperm whale is 13, 12 feet. It's 100, 300, 1,312 feet. Okay. Casey doesn't believe they're correct. Okay. So Casey, she's a researcher. She goes out and she's following um, 50 sperm whales and she finds that their average dive is 1,251 feet. Sample standard deviation is 50 feet. 500 or 50? Sorry, 500, yeah, 500. Sand deviation, sample sand deviation is 500 feet, okay? So use alpha equals 0 0.05 to test um, if KC is correct, okay? All right, so remember, again, before this class, you might have said, oh, well, KC is obviously correct because KC saw 1,251 feet, which is not equal to 13, uh, 12, or 1,312 feet, so Casey's correct, right? But now, no, no, because now we know, right, that this is, this is what Noah is saying for the population of sperm whales, right? This is Casey's sample estimate. What we're trying to determine right now in doing our hypothesis test is knowing, is this significantly different than this. It is 1251 significantly different than 1312? Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so our hypothesis testing, we'll have the same five steps as we did in the previous example. Step one, state your null and alternative hypothesis. Okay, since we're testing averages, right, we're finding the average dive of a sperm whale. We have mu there. Null always has equal to. What do you think it's going to be equal to? 1312. 1312, right? Because that's the, that's what Noah says is the population average dive, right? Yeah. So does null just mean that your sample is incorrect? Or it's not representative of the... Uh, no, null, null is always what you're trying to test. It's, it's, it, the null is like a, what's, what's currently believed. You can think of it that way. Okay. Right, so it's, it's never, this should never be your sample estimate. Right? Unless your sample estimate is identical to what is currently believed, which is pretty unprobabilistic. It's unlikely okay. that you would get so the exact same in number. In like all the other examples, when you're like, Assume the null is true. Are we ever going to assume the null is not true? No, and step number three, we always assume null is true. Okay, because that's what we're testing against. That's what we're testing against. We are collecting our sample to test against current knowledge. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Make sense? Good, good, good. Okay, so the alternative now, what do you think the alternative is going to be? So remember less in the previous one, 13. yeah, the previous one is greater than, right? Mm -hmm. it was, oh, so you said less than? Less than 1312. Why is it less than? Because the sample was less than? Yep. Uh, but remember, Casey doesn't say that she believes that sperm whales dive less than that. She, that's, 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 not what she's, that's not what she's guessing. She just thinks that Noah's wrong. So just not equal to? That's right. You can do that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, the, uh, that's a very good question actually. So the three different things you can have here, you could have not equal to, you could have greater than, or you could have less than. This is called a two-tail test. Okay, this is called greater than, that's one we just did in the previous example, that is right-tailed, and less than is left-tailed. Okay, very important, you know, that there are three different um, alternatives, and you have to read read through and figure out which of, which of them is appropriate. Okay? Problem better be clear on the test. Because, <laughs> like, the, the first one was... Um, Average income, and the, I don't know if you put the person's opinion, but 
We I think just I think basing it off of the fact that he got a lower or a higher oh, guess, so oh. we're just basing it off of that. No. Oh no, I wasn't basing it off of that. Okay, so, so, so I might not have written it very clearly, but I said out loud. Oh, so you said because of inflation. Because of this inflation. This person assumes. Yes. Okay, so in this problem, Casey does not believe they are correct. Yes. You would maybe phrase that better on an exam and say like. No, that's very, that, 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 that's, that's, that's pretty straightforward. Yes, does okay. not, that is, that is really good <laughs> phrasing. <laughs> does not believe they are correct. Right, because Casey is, does not believe that they are correct means that Casey it believes be that it's, it's something different than this. Casey believes it could be greater than or less than. Yeah, you could, okay. say, you could say it that way. Yeah, maybe you or could he, say it that way. Well, K Casey <laughs> believes that it's different than 1312. How about that? Okay. 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 Which is the same thing as saying Casey believes that it's something okay. different, or, right? <laughs> that they're not correct, all right? Okay, now, okay. now I know. Okay. <laughs> all right. So if it's not clearly directional, then it's probably safe to assume that it's a two-tailed. Okay, so okay. In, in the previous one, it was clearly directional. I might not have written it down on the board like I should have, but I said out loud, I said, um, you know, in, in, in an exam, it would be obviously written in the question. Gotcha. But due to inflation, they believe that it's currently greater than, mm -hmm. than it was previously. Gotcha. And that would have been clearly directional. Okay, so this is called a non directional test, or two, well, it's called a two tail test. Okay. Make sense? Alright, good, good. Alright, so step number two is to calculate our test statistic. So we go to our formula sheet. We have that nice section in our formula sheet titled test statistics. So we know we're not doing a proportion, right? We're testing a mean right now, average dive for the sperm whale. So sigma known, sigma unknown. Which one am I going to choose? Known. Why known? Because if your sample size is greater than 30, right. then you can assume the standard deviation of the sample is the same as the standard deviation of the population. Very good. Okay. So in this case, we are going to use sigma known, right? Because n is large. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use that z-test. Okay, so let me write down what is all this stuff. X bar is, from the sample, 1251, right? The average dive from the sample. Mu, always assume the null is true, right? That's why mu has that equal sign, 1312. I mean, that's why the same mu has the equal sign. That's why the null hypothesis has equal sign. Okay, so sigma. Right? It's really the sample standard deviation, but because the sample size is large, we assume that it's um, close enough to sigma. So that's 500. And n, our sample size, is 50. We have 50 sperm plus. So plug all these things in. So 1251 minus 1312, 500 over square root of 50. Don't forget when you use your calculator to put the numerator in parentheses and the denominator in parentheses. Try not to round. If you round on the denominator, it might mess up your rounding of z. Um, you want to make sure that your z is accurate up to two decimal places because remember your table has two decimal places for z. So you need to make sure you round to two decimal places always here. Okay. So this equals, let's see. Negative 0.86. Alright. Alright. Step number three p value or critical value. I will do both, but I'm going to start this video with p value, okay? In the next video, I'll do a critical value. Same, same example. Alright. So remember, when you're doing a p-value, you assume HO is true, okay? And then I talk about my distribution of my test statistic. Sometimes I like to use the notation TS to note that that is a Z, that's a test statistic. 
Okay, and the center of that is zero. Okay. So, remember, p-value is the probability of observing a, a testistic this extreme or more extreme, right? So this extreme, so over here to the left, right, is negative 0.86. So this extreme or more extreme. But that's only, that's only the left side. Remember, this is a two-tailed test. So you need to also consider the positive side. 0.86 positive or more extreme than 0.86 positive. So extreme means negative or positive in a two-tailed test. Okay, so p-value would be both those areas. Now remember, distribution, normal distribution, symmetric, right? So if I find this one, I can just do times two and that'll give me the total, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the p-value, in this case, it'll be two times the probability that z is less than negative 0.86. So if you look up 0.86 in your table, right, so, oh, negative, so go to your negative side, 0.8 is down here, 6 is here, and I think you get 0.1949, let me just double check that, 0.8, yep, okay, so do that times 2, and you get... 0.3898. Okay? So, 0.3898. Okay? Yep. So, if my, in step two, my test statistic is a positive number, yep. then I would still want to use the negative for the negative z value yeah. table because if I did the positive, then I'd get the whole. Yeah, stuff in right. The yeah, it's always better to use the negative always side the negative. because the negative side tells you. Because remember, yeah. this always is going to be the area behind. Yep. So if you use the positive one, then you're going to have to do one minus. It's just easier to just go ahead and use that one. Yeah, so even if this was positive 0.86, I would still look up negative 0.86. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so that's my p-value, right? Mm -hmm. So now, step number four, state your conclusion. It's either reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis at significance level 0.05. Fail to reject the hoe. Okay. It's greater than alpha, right? It's greater than 0 0.05, meaning that this is really likely, right? This area is really big, right? So it's really likely, if you assume the null is true, it's really likely that you would have observed a statistic value that's this, right? So in this case, we fail to reject HO at significance level 0.05. Yeah? Alright, step number five, uh, state your conclusion with regards to the alternative. So, there, there you, so you fail to reject this, meaning this is a reasonable. Okay? So, either you say there is evidence for the alternative or there is not evidence for the alternative. No evidence for that? There's, there's not, yeah. So, there is not, um, or there is not enough evidence to suggest that the mean dive for a sperm whale is different than um, 13, 12 feet. Okay? So you can't just say um, the, you know, the population mean is true. You can't say that. You can only say there is or isn't enough evidence to support the yeah. population mean. 
But that's it. You there, can't. There is or there is not enough evidence for the alternative. You always will phrase it like that. Okay. So there is not enough evidence. It corresponds to you failing to reject an all. Okay. Okay. There is enough evidence or there is evidence to suggest would correspond to you rejecting the null. If you reject the null, that means there's evidence for the alternative. If you fail to reject the null, then there's not evidence for the alternative, right? So um, why is it that I don't just say, oh, you know, more directly? Like, why am I saying it so, like, wishy-washy, there's evidence and not enough evidence? Like, why don't I just say, um, the, the mean dive time is, is not different than 1312. Like, why, do I, why, why is it so wordy? Right. Because you're just having one sample? Right, that's exactly right. There's just one sample, right? If we were to go out and get a different sample, we might find different evidence, basically. <laughs> right, but with this sample, there's not evidence to suggest mm -hmm. that the mean dive is different than 1312. Yeah. Mm. Okay? Make sense? Hmm. Okay, so we'll do, uh, let's, let, let me erase step three and do it with critical values. It's going to change a little bit because we have a two-sided test. So, let's go ahead and stop the video.